Hi guys and welcome to another quick video tutorial here on the Kiki and Manny Photography blog. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I want to show you guys part one of two videos of camera raw. Explaining all the basics about camera raw so you guys get to know the basics about camera raw, what tools we have and what adjustments we can do in camera raw for a pre-edit so you guys are getting warm for the next few video tutorials about more extended editing. Alright, so let's get started with the tools and the first tool here at the top is the zoom tool. So I'm going to select the zoom tool and now just hover over your image and select the area you want to zoom in. So drag with your mouse over your image, drop it and you will zoom in directly just onto the eyes or the whole window will just be the area you've selected and you will zoom into that area. Now you can do the same thing again and select the eye and drop it and you directly just zoomed into the eye. Now you're also able to hit right click and say from 6 to 400 percent how close you want to zoom in and if you want to go out again fit into view that's what I mostly do and you're back to normal mode and you see your whole image again. Now what I'm quickly want to do as well is say 100 percent and I'm onto the nose zoom totally closely and I want to move up in my image so what you'll have to do is hit spacebar. With spacebar hold spacebar you are now able you are switching to the hand mode and you are now able to move around in your image. So this works really ba good for me actually and is the basic tool I always hold spacebar to move around my image. Okay, hit right click again, fit into view and we're back into the full mode. So as I said before, hand tool works almost like the spacebar here at the top. You can see it right next to the zoom tool is the hand, bar, hand tool. Sorry. So select that if you want to move around your image and you're able to move around. Now next tool will be the white balance tool. Select white balance and you can pick white balance areas in your image. So say for instance I'm going to select the here. My image will get nice and bluish, all kind of blue temperature over here. My white balance has changed to 3250 Kelvin. So if I'm going to pick the eye now, it will most probably make it a bit warmer, yes. I mostly pick the grayscale over here, which will almost give me a even color, white temperature. I'm going to move that to 4500, which will give me a nice even temperature on my image. And I mostly work with studio stuff around 4500 Kelvin. Not too cool, not too hot. I think it's even enough. Okay, then the next tool that we got over here is our color sampler where you can pick some RGB colors. Select that and go over to your image again and select the area you want to get the coatings from. So if I select the first area here on the skin, it will directly show you all the RGB readings on the left hand side under hash one. Now if you want to go and extend that even more, you can go to the background, select the gray area over here and it will show you at the top hash two with all your RGB readings. Now you can do as many as you like as I'm going to do now at least six or seven, say eight. Now you can see all your RGB readings here at the top and you can directly see from where these RGB readings are coming. So which comes in handy sometimes. Now to get rid of it again, clear samples and you're out of that mode. Then next tool that you got is the targeted adjustment tool, which I never, never, never use, but it does help sometimes a little bit. Well, what it does, you hover over your image and you can push your highlights a bit up. Just put it onto your image and hold your mouse, click and move, drag it all the way up. And as you can see, my highlights are getting brighter and brighter and brighter and burning out. If I move down, highlights will be pushed away and will get really dull and very bad. So I never really work with that programs. Just if you want to maybe push your highlights a little, little bit on black and white, you can work with this. It works really nicely. Okay, I'm going to stop, stop there and leave it to that. Okay, next tool that we got in line is the crop tool. Okay, I did a pre-cropping uh, on this image ready. Going to move out of that. Now what it does is you just go over your image and select the area you want to crop. Select the area and drop it. Now directly you see this is the cropped area and you're still able to adjust these small boxes here to fit it directly to what you want to crop to or how you want to crop your image. Once you hit enter, your image will be cropped directly to that size and you've got it nice in front of you again. Now if you want to move out or say you're not satisfied with the cropping, you can go back to the crop tool here at the top, select it and you will be back in the cropping mode. Now you're able to crop it again, hit enter and it will be cropped. If you want to go out of it, just press escape and you're out of it again. 
Next tool that we got here in the top is the straighten tool. Works almost like the line tool in Photoshop. I really never work with the straighten tool, mostly with the line tool or linear tool in Photoshop. But if you want to say, for instance, now my image is a bit skew and you want to straighten this image just really quickly, then it's handy to use it. Just drag a line directly through the nose or through the middle of that image. Drop it and you'll see your image will be cropped to that size and to will re-rotate it as well. Now if I hit enter, you'll see whoop, there my image has been rotated and cropped to the size I wanted it. Now if you want to go back into the mode, just select that is, uh, tool again and you will be back in that cropping mode. If I wanted to remove that again, I'm going to go back to my crop tool and just say escape and I'm back into my normal mode. Now the next tune we got lined up next to the straighten tool is the healing brush or spot removal tool. I mostly call it healing brush tool because it does exactly the same like healing and cloning in Photoshop. I have to say I never never work with this tool because it's just taking way more time and it's complicated working with it. On the right hand side here you are able to adjust some settings. Either choose the type healing or cloning and you're able to change radius and opacity. Then go back to your image, I'm going to zoom in a little bit with my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom all the way down here, maybe onto the mouth, S find some spots over here, holding spacebar and moving up and down with my move tool. Then going to go back here at the top to spot removal and how this works is you're seeing the spot here currently and you want to remove that. So you drag over with your mouse, create this big size round circle move the circle over here and it will be healed. Now how it works is that the red area is the area you want to heal and the green area is the area where you're sampling from. So say you want to do another one and say you want to remove this spot over here. I'm just going to hold spacebar, move over here again and I want to remove that area. So drag over here with your mouse, create the round circle, move over there and the green area it's picking the area from there. Now say for instance your area is from here and it's sampling that area as you can see, maybe it's just a bit too close now. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. As you guys can see, your area that you have been sampling is not really nice. It's the it's directly picking up the texture from the lips and putting that texture onto there, which is not nice at all. So just be in mind when you do that, pick an area very close to it and not far away and have a look that the texture is almost the same. Otherwise, your image will not look nice in the end. All right. So that's the spot healing tool. Gonna hit right click and fit into view again. And then next tool we got lined up here at the top is the red eye removal tool. If you got red eyes, very easy. Use this tool. Just drag with your mouse over that, select the area, drop it and camera roll will run quickly and select all the red areas and saturate that down. Okay, next tool that we got here at the top is the adjustment brush. I don't really work that much with the adjustment brush because I find it hard working with it and it's very uneven. So yeah, if you want to give it a go, try it. On the right hand side, adjustment brush, you can do some rough adjustments, exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity, sharpness and color. You can change your size, feathering, flow and density. At the bottom here, you can't really see it because my screen is too small today. You can also say clear all and show pins. If you want to, show pins are very handy, so use show pins. Alright, so let's get started. Um, what you're able to do, I'm just going to change my exposure really, really down so you guys can see what I'm doing at the moment. Size is going to make it a bit bigger. Feathering to zero. I want to have a really, really hard edge. And my flow as well. And maybe my size down a bit again. And I'm going to paint over here now to just show you guys what will happen. Change my flow, sorry, flow up again. Make that up. Okay. So now I'm going to paint all over this image and say you want to, to just burn the whole skin a little bit and make it nice and dark. So Photoshop is currently rendering this because this uh, image is very high quality so it takes a little bit of time for Photoshop or Camera Raw to run this actually. So say for instance now I painted all over the skin and I just wanted to make the skin really darkish or burn it a little bit so you're able with this tool select the area you want to burn or darken or whatever you want to do with your image select the area and then over here on the right hand side now you're able to exchange or change these adjustments again and will be instantly taken over on your image so say for instance now I'm going to go back to exposure over here and I'm going to take my exposure all the way up 
So now, as you guys can see, it takes it up a little bit and it gets brighter, brighter, brighter and brighter. So this brush tool, adjustment tool, you can use that on anything if you want to just make the contrast a little bit or the saturations a little bit. Select the area you want to change your settings and on the side you are able to do these settings and then you'll directly see the difference or the new things on your image. I'm not a fan of this brush tool at all because it's just very complicated for me. It takes a lot of time and I could do that quicker with levels in Photoshop. Now I'm going to say clear all down here so my whole brush will be out and my image will look normal again. So that's the adjustment brush. Then next we got a gradation filter. I really never work with this tool. I would rather do gradation in, in Photoshop easier and better to control that. Then if you want to just drag with your mouse over here and you can create a gradation. On the side here you can do some rough adjustments again and works almost like the adjustment brush. Just do your adjustments here, do your graduation and you're done with that. To get rid of that graduated filter again you can go to clear all and it will be out again your image will be totally normal. Alright, then over here you can obviously rotate your images to 90 degrees to the left side or clockwise and anti-clockwise over here. Then last step I wanted to show you guys, if you select this, this is the camera raw preferences and in here I wouldn't change a lot of things. Normally keep it to general, save image settings in sidecar, yes, apply sh sharpening to all images, yes. Then if you want to you can say previous images only but I will say all images always. Then default image settings, apply auto tone adjustments, no you don't want that. Tick these three bo boxes for apply auto grayscale, mix when covering to grayscale, make default specify to camera serial number, yes. And tick the last box, make default specify camera, ISO settings, yes you want that too. Camera raw cage, maximum size keep it to 5 gigabyte DNG file handling if you want to work with that ignore sidecar no I'll not tick these boxes and JPEG and TIFF handling automatically open JPEGs with settings yes you want to keep that to that and it's pretty much the normal settings I had in my camera raw going to be done with that gonna hit OK and I'm pretty much done with that then next step over here is the preview button now if you tap this preview button you can actually see what is happening to your image if this is blended out you will not directly see what is happening if you're using these tools so please tap this box here at the top to have preview on and see always what you are doing okay so that was part one of our quick camera raw adjustments uh, tool and adjustments video I'm going to explain all of this adjustments next week. I hope this tutorial helped you guys a little bit. Thank you for watching and see you next week on another Technical Wednesday Rundown. My name is Manny and bye-bye.